I was talking to a Jehovah's Witness the other day about the creation of the universe. During our conversation, I told him that Jesus Christ created everything. And he disagreed with me. He said, no, Jehovah created everything. So I took him to Colossians 1.16 that reads, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Well, the Jehovah's Witness did not receive this scripture. Uh, he has a problem with it because he has taught a different version of this text. The New World Translation reads, Because by means of him all other things were created in the heavens and on the earth, the things visible and the things invisible, whether they are thrones or lordships or governments or authorities. All other things have been created through him and for him. Well, as many of you probably already know, the word other in this translation is not found in any Greek manuscript. As a matter of fact, there's not a Bible on the planet throughout history that has ever added the word other to this passage. The Watchtower knows that only one could have created all things, and that's God. So when the Bible says Jesus created all things, they know they had to do something about that. So they added the word other to make it sound like Jesus is not God. Well, I got to thinking to myself, Jehovah's Witnesses must really trust the Watchtower without reservation, really, that they're willing to trust them even though they add extra words to the Bible that have no place there. That they would just say, we trust you, Watchtower, no matter what you do, we will defend you. And I just got to thinking, that is an immense amount of trust that they'd be willing to trust their souls, to trust their very salvation to this organization. Whatever they say, they're willing to say yes and amen. And I just thought they must have just this strong reputation throughout the years of, of consistency, of truth, that the Watchtower has been a solid rock for which the Jehovah's Witnesses stand. So I figured, hey, let me take a little journey through some of the Watchtower publications just to see how dependable and, and, and trustworthy they have been over the years. Starting with a Watchtower publication known as The Golden Age, February 4th, 1931. Talking about vaccinations. Vaccination is a direct violation of the everlasting covenant that God made with Noah after the flood. Of all the inventions that have been foistered upon mankind for their defilement, the most subtly devilish is that of vaccination. Wow, I didn't know Jehovah's Witnesses were so hardcore against vaccination. Let's see what else they have to say about that. The Watchtower, December 15th, 1952. The matter of vaccination is one for the individual. After consideration of the matter, it does not appear to us to be in violation of the everlasting covenant made with Noah. Wow, they really took a, a, a 180 on their stance of vaccinations. I wonder, wonder why. Hmm. Well, let's, let's go on. Let's, let's, let's look what they have to say about birthdays. Jehovah's Witnesses are very passionate about birthdays. Let's see what they have to say about birthdays. Watchtower, January 1st, 1940. I appreciate the phonograph which came to me on the morning after the 8th, which was my 80th birthday. It was indeed a birthday gift from Jehovah to be used in proclaiming his name. Hmm. Then we read in JW.org the page titled, Why Don't Jehovah's Witnesses Celebrate Birthdays? Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate birthdays because they believe such celebrations displease God. Birthday celebrations have pagan roots. Wow. I wonder if Jehovah knew 
that these things have pagan roots when he sent that man his birthday gift. Hmm. Well, let's, let's, let's check Christmas. That's another thing Jehovah's Witnesses are very passionate about is Christmas. Let's see what they have to say about Christmas. Watchtower, December 7th, 1904. We may as well join with the civilized world in celebrating the grand event on the day which the majority celebrate Christmas Day. But then in the Watchtower's page, Why Don't Jehovah's Witnesses Celebrate Christmas? We believe that Christmas is not approved by God because it is rooted in pagan customs and rites. What? Such back and forth. I wonder, was Jehovah speaking for the Jehovah's Witnesses when he said, don't celebrate Christmas? Or was Jehovah speaking when he said, do celebrate Christmas? This is very confusing to me. I'm not sure which one. I wonder why Jehovah's Witnesses have such a strong trust in the Watchtower after such, such inconsistencies. This just doesn't make sense to me. Well, maybe, maybe we've got a bad sampling. Let's, let's keep going. Let's see what else we can find that the Watchtower has to say. Watchtower, November 15th, 1939. Jehovah God commands all to worship Christ Jesus. Watchtower, January 1st, 1954. No distinct worship is to be rendered to Jesus Christ. Wow. Well, let's, Michael's a big issue too. Let's, let's see, maybe, maybe we'll find some consistency with, with Michael the Archangel. Watchtower, November 1879, speaking of Jesus, it is said, let all the angels of God worship him. That must include Michael, the chief archangel. Hence, Michael is not the son of God. Well, later in the Watchtower publication titled, Is Jesus Archangel Michael? They say, simply put, yes. Wow. Then in 1914, Charles Taze Russell made a photodrama of creation. In it, he depicted Jesus dying on a cross. But then the JW.org page says, did Jesus die on a cross? The Bible provides evidence that Jesus died not on a cross, but on an upright stake. This is, this is just a whole lot. You know, the other day I was speaking to a Jehovah's Witness and, and, and I was telling him the Bible says Jesus is God. And he said, well, you're kind of right. The Bible says Jesus is mighty God. Jehovah is God Almighty. So I said, oh, so there's a distinction between mighty God and almighty God? He said, yes, Jesus is called mighty God, but Jehovah is much more. He is Almighty God. So I was like, wow, so Jehovah wouldn't be called Mighty God and Jesus wouldn't be called Almighty. He said, yes, Jehovah is Almighty, Jesus is Mighty. But then I said, well, let's look at Deuteronomy 10.17. It says, for your Lord God, speaking of Jehovah, is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty Isaiah 10, 21, the remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. Speaking of Jehovah, Jeremiah 32, 18, O great and mighty God, over and over these inconsistencies. And friends, listen, I could keep going. I could talk about the, the plethora of examples of Armageddon prophecies that did not take place, that Jehovah apparently said it would take place here or there or here or here, and none of them took place. I could also show you where the Watchtower purposefully misquoted Greek scholars to defend their text, or where the Watchtower relied on people who dabbled in the occult for their translations, or I could show you where they made up terms to defend their Bible. 
Jehovah's Witnesses, please listen. I want you just to take a moment to examine where you find yourself. You are literally following an organization that demands 100% allegiance while at the same time has a strong, lasting history of inconsistency and untruths. You are literally following an organization that makes you listen even though they are back and forth on almost all pivotal doctrines. Listen, there is a remedy. His name is Jesus. He asks you to stop drinking the poison and start reading his word. Read his word for what it says. If the Bible tells you that Jesus created all things, accept that. If the Bible tells you Jesus is to be worshipped, accept that. If the Bible tells you that Jesus is God, accept that. I hope this message blessed you and helps you in your pursuit of truth.